once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, uh, distinctly I remember. It was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost on the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Nameless here forevermore. The silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me. Filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, "'some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. "'This it is, and nothing more." And presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. "'Sir,' said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, "'but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, "'and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, "'that I scarce was sure I heard you. "'Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber, turning all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, something louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window, that is. Let me see then what there that is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment of this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter when with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door. Perched upon the bust of palace dust above my chamber door. Perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven. Ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marvel this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast, upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on that placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will meet me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless said I, what it utters is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master, who's unbust and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hopes that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. 
But the raven, still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease, reclining on the cushion's velvet lining, with the lamplight gloating o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, never more. Then me thought, the air grew denser, perfume from an unseen censer swung by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee respite, respite and nepenthe from my memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Worth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is the, is the balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet, still of bird or devil. By that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore. A clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I sweet upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest of the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. The raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, and his eyes of all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted. Nevermore.